Did Einstein crack the biggest problem in physics and didn't know it? A lot of people asked me to comment on this. It's a discussion at this year's World Science Festival, moderated by Brian Greene, about and with the scientists who, two years ago, supposedly used a quantum computer to open a wormhole. Except that, you know, they didn't. It's been the worst case of science hype since scientists supposedly created negative mass. Except that, you know, they didn't. I thought everything that could have been said about this had been said. But after watching the discussion, I think I do have something to add. Namely, an answer to the question of whether Einstein unknowingly solved the biggest problem in physics. Einstein would really like to know. But first, a quick recap. String theory is one of the candidate theories for combining quantum physics with gravity. That's the biggest problem in physics, which the title of the discussion is referring to. The problem is that there's no evidence that string theory is correct. In the attempt of finding some experimental support for their ideas, string theorists have in the past decade shifted their focus from particle physics to quantum computing. Why? Because the money is now in quantum tech. This shift has been going on for some while, but two years ago, one of those papers made big headlines after Quantum Magazine and the New York Times drew attention to it. They claimed that physicists had created a wormhole with a quantum computer and that the mathematics of string theory was instrumental in making this work. In the discussion now, Brian Greene starts out by by raising the impression that this has something to do with testing quantum gravity. We want to go beyond the mathematics to get some kind of contact with, with observation or experiment or at least something. But the only thing they did was use a quantum computer to do a computation for a theory that has no evidence speaking for it. And then they observed the result of the calculation. If I observe the result of a string theory calculation, that isn't evidence for string theory. It'd be like claiming that playing Angry Birds is evidence that pigs can pop. Okay, you could say, but we do computer simulations all the time to understand what's going on in reality. Yes, but this quantum computer simulation, even in the most charitable interpretation, isn't about reality. It's about a universe that we know we do not inhabit. It's a fictional, lower dimensional string theory universe. In the discussion, they explain their experiment as follows. So here you teach two physical systems that are entangled, and that's what the, the ghostly line there is. And we want to relate that both to quantum teleportation with entanglement, but also to a wormhole that you can actually move things through. And so that's what the, the bottom graphic is showing is something that looks more like a wormhole. And now the idea is that the two pictures that I'm showing you are two different descriptions of the same thing. That I can talk about this in the language of quantum mechanics, and I can talk about it in the language of wormholes, but I'm really describing the same process. That explanation is accurate. But what does it mean? It means that what's actually happening in the quantum computer is kind of what's going on in the upper image. Entanglement between qubits. And that's all well and good. The lower image just says you can mathematically reformulate that and interpret the mathematics as some sort of wormhole in a space with a negative cosmological constant in two dimensions that we don't inhabit. And that's the only thing they did. They moved around a few electrons in superconducting qubits and then added a fancy interpretation. Why did they do that? because Nature magazine basically doesn't publish theory papers. But if you can get some experimentalists to wiggle a few qubits in a quantum computer, then Nature will publish it. And a paper in Nature is worth a lot of money in grants. Okay, so what do we learn from this? Here's what they say in the discussion. Now, so what we'd like to do is let's repeat this with, say, 
50 qubits or 100 qubits. You can do this with as many qubits as you wish. It will not tell us anything about quantum gravity because we don't live in the sort of space that this simulation can be interpreted as. Also, they forgot to mention that after the paper was published, several other researchers questioned whether it actually did what they said they did. There's a part of this story, which I haven't mentioned before, that you might find amusing. Several years ago, I was invited by an editor at Quantum magazine to write a regular column for them. I did this for some time and you can check this on their website. Then I wrote an article in which I explained my misgivings about how string theorists are deliberately confusing the public by conflating those mathematical dualities of black holes with real black holes. It was titled The Dual Life of Black Holes. Yes, my article was warning of exactly the shitstorm that the wormhole in a quantum computer later caused. It was also the last article I ever wrote for Quantum Magazine, because some anonymous editor clearly didn't like it that I said this so-called research isn't science. My article was watered down and after this they simply stopped replying to my emails. I never got an explanation. This incidentally is a big part of the reason why I'm on YouTube now, so that I can say bullshit when I mean bullshit without some editor spitting into the soup. In summary, no, Einstein didn't solve the problem of quantum gravity and neither did anyone else. They say that no one understands quantum mechanics. I think it's not true. It's totally understandable. If you want to give it a try yourself, check out my quantum mechanics course on brilliant.org. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And they're adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with their course on quantum computing or differential equations. Sounds good. I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.